cracking big dogs welcome back to the hq welcome back to the channel this is big dogs gotta eat fantasy football i'm nicholas we got some breaking news this morning if you are just waking up and you haven't heard yet tyree kill is getting a zero game suspension so he is not getting suspended despite all of the nonsense that's happened off the field for the last two months i am not here to comment on that i have no idea whether or not he should have been suspended my only comment is that i'm surprised he wasn't suspended i don't give a shit what your lawyer takes are your legal takes i like please fucking save them don't at me we're here to talk about the fantasy football implications of tyree kill will be available as long as new evidence doesn't come to light if new evidence comes out the nfl will jump back into it and may suspend him for a length of more than zero games we're going to talk about tyree kill today where is he going to be drafted we're going to talk about the impact on travis kelsey on patrick mahomes on sammy Watkins, on all the fraud wide receiver threes in this offense Michael hardman byron pringle demarcus robinson all of this jam-packed into a little breaking news segment today if you enjoy the video make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We're doing everything fantasy football from here until the start of the season, into the season. Big dogs got to eat. Let's run it. Okay, so there's no debating that if Terry kills on the field, he's an elite fantasy wide receiver. Uh, despite his small size, he operates as the clear wide receiver one in this offense, an offense that averaged 35 points per game last year. Terry kill will undoubtedly jump right into, you know, that turn draft spot, right? Where that second tier of wide receivers is going, if not some of the first tier guys that drop there. Usually Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins go in like the six to nine range and then once you hit the 10 11 12 13 14 15 range it's all those second tier guys odell juju julio michael thomas etc etc terry kill jumps right into that range for me he finished last year legitimately as the wide receiver one in standard and half ppr overall the most fantasy points at the wide receiver position came from Tyree Kill last year. So why would he not be considered the wide receiver one? It's a consistency thing, right? I'm using the consistency charts in the draft guide on bigdogsdraftguide.com. Tyree Kill had three separate games where he went under seven and a half half PPR fantasy points. And he had seven total games in which he went under 12 and a half half PPR fantasy points. Zero games from 12 and a half to 17. So there was no mid-range outcomes. It was either he was not scoring that much, he was not scoring as a wide receiver one or barely a wide receiver two, or he was going off for you, of course, right? He had five separate games in which he went for 24 or more fantasy points. Now, that's nice to have on your team. If you're at the turn and you're able to get two of these wide receivers, I'm actually happy because a lot of the drafts that I'm in, I have a later pick, like the eighth, ninth, tenth, which just adds more players into that pool that I would like to take. So if you're going to stack him with someone like Michael Thomas, who's probably more safe on a week-over-week -week basis, I think that's a, a great stacking. Tyree Kill, right now, I believe, if I look at my rankings, I updated all of them in the draft guide this morning. Tyree Kill is wide receiver five for me in half PPR, five for me in standard, and I believe he's probably the wide receiver six for me in full PPR because he doesn't catch as many passes as the upper tier guys. He had 87 last year, but Michael Thomas is behind him in my rankings in half and standard, but Michael Thomas is a PPR machine, so he jumps over him. So Tyree Kill, for me, becomes a top 12 pick in that area because we know what this offense is and we know Tyree Kill is ridiculously explosive match with Patrick Mahomes coming into his second full year as a starter there's really nothing not to like in this situation as for Travis Kelsey a lot of people are going to say this kills him right this moves him down a lot and I understand that right because Tyree Kill had over 1600 total yards from scrimmage last year 137 targets 87 receptions that's a lot of offense that they needed to put elsewhere I didn't think Travis Kelsey was going to you know take the large large majority of that I still think Travis Kelsey is Patrick Mahomes' go-to guy. Everything that's not really far downfield or like specialized plays, a lot of screen passes, is mainly Travis Kelsey over the middle. And it's just the positional advantage that he gives you at tight end that makes him so valuable. It's not the sense that Terry Kill was going to be out and that's why Travis Kelsey was so far and ahead of the other tight ends. He is just so much better and in such a better situation, even compared to an Ertz and a Kittle, who I think you can argue have more red flags. Like Ertz is a really solid PPR guy, but they do have Goddard coming into his second year. They bring in Jaws, who's a red zone beast. They have pass catching back now in Miles Sanders. So there's a lot more weapons there. I still think 
think Ertz is a very top tier tight end, but I don't think he gets to where Kelsey is. And Kelsey is someone I think could potentially contend for like 15 touchdowns this year. So whereas I had Kelsey actually ranked in like the six to eight range, I push him back a little bit. He's probably going in the exact same range as Tyree Kill in that like 10 to 12 range at the turn. For me, this does not make me nervous about drafting Kelsey. If I'm a dynasty owner, I'm actually excited about this because if Tyree Kill was off the field, man, Kelsey was going to get so much attention, and I think defenders were just going to absolutely like annihilate him on every play. They're going to be all over him. That ankle, we don't really know what the situation is with, with the ankle yet, but I'm kind of happy as a dynasty owner of Travis Kelsey that Terry Kill is going to be back on the field. So for redraft, Kelsey is very much still a top 12 pick for me. In terms of Patrick Mahomes, I was saying this from the start of the offseason before any of the Terry Kill stuff even happened. He was never a third round pick for me. He was more of a late fourth, maybe fifth round pick for me because I just don't see the positional advantage at quarterback. Now that we know Terry Kill is going to be on the field, Patrick Mahomes probably moves into the fourth round for me. I still will not be taking any quarterback within the first three rounds, but just the uh, you know combination of floor and upside that a guy like Patrick Mahomes brings. In one quarterback leagues, again, I, th- I still think there are a lot of like very good options at the top between Rodgers, Andrew Luck, Deshaun Watson, who I think last year all had great years. I think this year, all three of those guys will actually improve statistically on what they did in 2018. So I think they're going to be actually closer to Patrick Mahomes, which just makes that position a little less valuable. Like yes, Patrick Mahomes, you're going to be happy to have on your team, of course. In one quarterback leagues, it just doesn't make sense to use a top three pick when you can get a skill player whose positional advantage is much greater, right? If you're getting a top running back or you're getting even if you're getting like a Zach Ertz or a Kittle in the third round, as opposed to Patrick Mahomes in the third round, the positional advantage you get with an Ertz in your lineup over like an Eric Ebron or something, assuming whatever Eric Ebron did last year isn't what he's going to do this year, is very, very, very big on a week over week basis and out producing your opponent. So Mahomes for me, obviously way more enticing to have Mahomes because that offense opens up tremendously when Tyree kills on the field is still not someone I'm taking within the first three rounds and super flex he's a top five pick while all the Tyree kill nonsense was going on so yes he's still very much in the top five discussion I'm not someone who normally likes to use their first round pick on a quarterback in super flex leagues but this gives you more ammunition if you do want to take Mahomes I'm not going to be mad at you whatsoever because he gives you arguably the most valuable piece of a super flex league to top your lineup. Speaking about opening up the offense, I know I I got a lot of tweets about Damian Williams being in a much better situation. And yes, that is very, very much the case because now defenses literally can't cheat anywhere on on this offense because you have Mahomes who has ridiculously strong arm, who's also mobile. You have Kelsey running the middle. You have Tariq Hill now stretching the field. You're not gonna ever be able to have safeties creep up because Tariq Hill will blow the top off you. This opens up more lanes for Damian Williams. Does it make me like him more? Yes. Am I gonna like move him way up my rankings? No, not really. It just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. We don't actually know who Damian Williams is as a player. So that takes out a variable of having to know whether or not he's going to be regularly beating defenders that are in the box if they decide to game plan around Damian Williams, which will never really be the case anymore with Tyreek Hill back on the field. So Damian Williams, as far as I'm concerned, didn't actually move up in my rankings whatsoever. I never disliked the guy. I never absolutely loved him to the point where he was like a top eight running back for me, but he still is on that borderline RB1 cusp. I think this gives you a little bit more case to feel comfortable with him in redraft talking about Sammy Watkins this is something else I said throughout earlier in the offseason I always would have rather had Sammy Watkins as an eighth or ninth round pick knowing Tyree Kill was on the field than the uncertainty of taking him in like the fourth or fifth round where you normally would have had to take him now if Tyree Kill's suspension was long Sammy Watkins like I understand there's a lot of injury concern but when you're getting a guy in the eighth ninth round like that's you know there's gonna be a lot of players in that range that are coming with injury concern and a lot of upside or just a lot of red flags in general when you're getting down to that range in the draft so with Sammy Watkins I'm excited to see how far his ADP falls because if he starts going in like the eighth ninth round I will be hitting that button all the time and I know he was off the field on the field wildly inconsistent but he had plenty of big games last year six for 100 along with 31 rushing yards so 131 yards from scrimmage five for 75 six for 70 4 for 74, 8 for 107, 2 touchdowns, 5 for 62, 6 for 62 in the playoffs, 4 for 114 in the playoffs. I understand that Watkins is never really going to be that elite fantasy option that we want him to be, but this is going to be an offense that throws the ball a lot. And if Watkins is that wide receiver too, if he's going to be healthy, I think he's a tremendous value in the 8th, ninth round. Yes, he's not going to have that top 12 upside, but if you're going to draft someone that late where you're probably going to be drafting other guys like these, you know, there's a lot of second year wide receivers that I like for upside. Marcus about the Scantling and Kiki QT and like Will Fuller is there. I would much rather have Sammy Watkins there because when he's on the field, like we saw how the, how the year ended, he missed a large portion of the, the end of the season. But when he came back for the playoffs, 
eight targets in both playoff games, six for 62, four for 114. Like Patrick Mahomes, this is, he is still very much a part of their game plan. There's a reason they signed him to that fat contract. So for Sammy Watkins, I love this from a value standpoint because everyone's gonna be like, ah, never mind. I don't really want Watkins anymore. If he falls, I'm all in on him. Eighth, ninth, anything later than that. So I like Watkins a lot. Who else did we not talk about? Third wide receiver, I'm not really interested in because they have four options that they're gonna go to before the third wide receiver. This is for redraft. So they have obviously Travis Kelsey. They have the running back, Damian Williams. They have Tyreek Hill now. They have Sammy Watkins. So whoever's the fifth option, I am not anywhere near like excited about. They have Chris Conley last year who had his chance to do well, never blew up. People are excited about Demarcus Robinson, about Byron Pringle, about their their rookie, McCole Hardman. Now Hardman gets a little bit of a chance to uh, acclimate himself into the NFL and not being thrown right into that Tyreek Hill roll. But uh, redraft, all three of those guys are pretty much off my radar unless something happens to Sammy Watkins. Then we can debate that. I actually would, I'm curious as to, uh, for your guys' standpoint, who is the most intriguing third wide receiver on the Chiefs team right now to you guys? Because there's pretty much been buzz around all three guys all offseason between Pringle, Hardman, and Demarcus Robinson. Who is your favorite of those three? Say Watkins goes down. Who would be your favorite to step up into that wide receiver two role? So I think that's all I got for today. Just wanted to get some breaking news out there to you guys. Um, just to wrap up and summarize this, Tyreek Hill, definitely a top 12 pick now. Travis Kelsey remains a top 12 pick in my opinion. Patrick Mahomes, still not jumping the gun on him. He still remains the quarterback one for sure. Now he actually probably jumps into his own elite tier in my opinion. And he's a fourth round pick in that area. Superflex still a top five pick. Sammy Watkins becomes extremely intriguing to me because the price drop is going to eventually correct itself into his ADP. And I'm not really looking at any of the other wide receivers here outside of Watkins and Tyreek Hill. If you want my full rankings, everything you know broken down, every, all the fantasy football knowledge in my brain goes into my draft guide to help you prep for your 2019 fantasy football draft. You can cop that at bigdogsdraftguide.com. It's got the rankings, PPR, standard, half PPR, broken down positionally by tiers. It's got my top sleepers, my top busts, my must draft players, a ton of exclusive articles. There's the consistency charts, the market share charts, tools updated throughout the entire summer, available on the phone, available on the computer, available on the laptop, tablet, whatever, however you prefer to dominate your draft. You will do so with the Big Dog Draft Guide at bigdogdraftguide.com. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you on Monday's video. I'm about to head down the shore tomorrow morning to Snacks Ashore House. Stay tuned for the vlog. Stay tuned for Fade the Public's episode next weekend. I love y'all. We out. Peace.